all, it says find the geometric mean. It's been a long time since we've done this, so hopefully it's a good review. So what the geometric mean is, if you have a right triangle and you drop an altitude down from a right triangle. So we're dropping an altitude from the right angle of a right triangle, and it creates a geometric mean um, with the base and the altitude. So remember that we did we do 2 over x is equal to x over 10. Does everybody kind of remember that? And there was a kind of a little trick. You're kind of forming like a triangle here. You go, you know, 2 over x is equal to x over 10. Now, it's not always going to be in that order. It's this side. It's this side over this side. Or, yeah, this side over this side will be equal to this side over this side. So it's not always going to be 2x necessarily. You get what I'm saying. You just go in that order. Put it in. In that little triangle thing we just did. So now we can go ahead and solve for x. In this problem, we're going to cross multiply, right? So we'll multiply both sides by 10, but it divides out on this side. 10 over 10 is 1. We'll multiply both sides by x, but x over x is 1, so it divides out on this side. So then from there, so far now we have 20 is equal to x squared. x times x is x squared. So now we're solving for x. Um, so, because that would be the geometric mean, so we're solving for x. So we square root both sides. Now, if you get a decimal, I will expect you to not put the decimal, because I know we know how to do this by hand. And it didn't say anything about round to the nearest decimal. If it doesn't say anything about round to a decimal, you'll want the exact answer. So the square root of 20 is a decimal, right? Yeah. So we break it down by hand. So 4 breaks down into 2 times 2, right? Pulling out groups of 2. So isn't it 2 square roots of 5? Okay. So x is 2 square roots of 5. Questions on that? Okay. <clears throat> okay, looking at this one, draw the picture real quick. Um, it's been a while since we've done side splitters. So if you have two lines, this line and this line, that are not parallel necessarily. It didn't say they were parallel, so that we can't assume they are parallel. Um, if you have two lines and then another two lines that are parallel intersect them, then it cuts this into portions that are equal. So it'll cut this over this will be equal to this over this. So it says, <clears throat> what is x? So we've got to come up with a true statement to solve for x. So since these lines are parallel, they're cutting these sides into equal proportions. So we'll do x over 3 is equal to 2x plus 1 over 4. So now it's just algebra. Let's solve for x. So we'll cross multiply by 4. It divides out over here because 4 over 4 is 1. We'll cross multiply by 3. It divides out over here because 3 over 3 is 1. <clears throat> now because there's two terms, we always need to use parentheses. So now we can go ahead and continue to solve here. So we have 4x is equal to 6x plus 3, right? Solving for x, so we'll subtract 6x. So we have negative 2x is equal to 3. Divide both sides by negative 2. So x is equal to negative 3 over 2. Do we have any questions on that one? Because I made the problem up and didn't think about it hard enough. So I just threw this on. So you're right. If you look at it, it doesn't make sense because this is <clears throat> not going to be able to be negative, right? But it's because I made the problem up. Just quickly threw on some things without thinking about it. So if your math's right, go with it. But yeah, if you if if I if we thought about the problem hard enough, um, <clears throat> like on your packet, it will be thought through a lot better. Um, so if you get a negative, you should say to yourself, that doesn't make sense. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, next problem. Number three, um, you don't need to write this out. I will take forever. Just draw the picture with me and read it with me so that it makes sense to you. This is to help you. So it says, in triangle ABC, the bisector of angle B cuts side AC into segments, X plus 1 and X. 
Then it gives us, if side AB is 10 and side BC is 8, what is X? So there's a lot going on, and a lot of times when you guys see all these words, you're like, I don't know how to do that. But you've got to draw yourself a picture, set it up, and then I bet you'll know how. So triangle ABC, so I'm going to draw a triangle. And I'm going to go ahead and label it just ABC. So I've done this in triangle ABC. Their bisector is angle B, cut side AC. So angle bisector of angle B, that means it's bisecting, cutting this angle, so we're dropping this down. It cuts side AC. Does everybody see how it's cutting side AC? Okay, so it makes sense so far. Into segments X plus 1 and X. So X plus 1 and X. And then it says side AB is 10. So I'm putting that in. Isn't this side AB? And then side BC is 8. So now it's saying what is, what is X? So we've got to set up a true statement and solve for x. So here's one thing that I didn't draw in but probably should. If it's a bisector, an angle bisector, then it's cutting the angle into two equal segments. So this is angle bisectors. So we'll just set up a ratio of corresponding sides and solve for x. So isn't this angle across from this side? Mm -hmm. This angle's across from this side, they're the same angles. So we know that we should set it up. Those are the corresponding sides. So we could do... 10 over 8, those are the corresponding sides on the different triangles, will be equal to, I went with 10, so I've got to start on this triangle, x plus 1 over x. Does everybody see how I set that up? Now it's just algebra, let's quickly do this. So we multiply both sides by x, we multiply both sides by 8, we need to put that in parentheses because it has two terms. Can I erase the bottom yet? Okay. So we have 10x is equal to 8x plus 8, and then we will solve, and this is going to come out, oh no, it's good. So we subtract 8x, subtract 8x, so we have 2x is equal to 8, right? Divide by 2. So x is equal to 4. So it did say, what is x? We've done that, we solved for x. Questions. Okay, that was angle bisectors. Ratios of corresponding sides. Okay. <clears throat> this one should be pretty easy, but a lot of times people get it mixed up backwards on something like this. So it says, what is the scale factor? Now, a scale factor is what you multiplied by to get from one figure to the next. It's always multiplication. So it says, the solid figure is a dilation of the dashed line. So this is backwards, kind of. The solid figure is a dilation of the dashed line. So we started with the dashed line, we performed a dilation, and it went to this. So does everybody see we started on a pink dashed line? Yes. Then we shrunk it, still called a dilation. Um, we shrunk it, and it's now this. So it wants to know what the scale factor is. So let's set up a true statement. Don't we want to know how we got from 24 to 12? Yeah. Everybody? So I'd say, I always set it up like this so I don't ever get it wrong. 24 times what? equals 12. Scale factors are what you multiply to get to the other figure. So now solving for question mark will be good. So we divide by 24. So question mark is 1 half, right? So guys, to get from 24 to 12, we multiplied by a half, which makes sense, right? So we shrunk it by dividing by 2, but really it's always a multiplication. That's why we say we multiplied by 1 half. Yes? But you go and um, instead solve for the dilation of 12 to 24 and then switch it so that it became the same. Yes. You do that as well. As long as you know which one, because it could have asked, it could have, in the word, in the instructions, I could have said, what's the dilation from the solid line to the dashed line? So it would have been two, right? Yeah. So it just depends on the way it, we're looking here. <clears throat> So yeah, scale factor is one half. So yes, you could do that. We would have multiplied by two to get here, right? So that means to get from here to here, we would have divided by two, which is multiplying by one half. Yeah. Okay. All right, solve for x. Look at this picture. Isn't this side lengths of a right triangle? Yes. 
Yes, right? Side lengths of a right triangle. If you have two sides of a right triangle, either the hypotenuse and the side, or two sides and no hypotenuse, and it's a right triangle, only if it's a right triangle, and it is, then you can use the Pythagorean theorem. That is only for sides of a right triangle. Now you have to set it up correctly, so in this picture we know it's going to be side 1 squared, right? You guys learned it maybe back in the day, you know, as a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, but I don't say it like that because then people get too caught up in what's a, b, and c. So it's really just side 1 squared plus side 2 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. The hypotenuse has to be on that side of the equation or you will get it wrong. So looking at this, we'll do 6 squared plus what squared? X squared. X squared is equal to our hypotenuse 12 squared. So we have... So obviously, so we have 36 plus x squared is equal to 144, right? And now we're just solving for x, so we'll take 144 minus 36. So we have x squared is equal to 108, then we'll square root it, right? So we have the square root of 108, x is equal to the square root of 108. If you get a decimal, I do expect you, they will expect you, they did not say anything about decimals to give me the exact answer. So we're going to simplify this. Give me some factors of 108. Okay, 9 and 12. 9 breaks down into 3 and 3. 12 breaks down into 4 and 3. And 4 breaks down into 2 and 2. You're pulling out groups of 2. Don't double dip. 9's not there. 12's not there. You rewrote it. 4 is not there. You rewrote it as 2 and 2. And then 108's not there. Does everybody understand what I'm doing? So that we don't double dip. Pulling out groups of two, so there's two threes, so you pull out a three. There's two twos, so you pull out a two. Don't we multiply what we pull out? Yes. And left was a three. If you'll do good handwriting here, you won't get it wrong so much. So we still have a square root of three. So our answer will be six square roots of three. That's our x value. That's that side length. Questions? A couple more, we're almost done. What is the value of x? <clears throat> Draw that picture real quick. So it says, what is the value of x? Can we use Pythagorean theorem to find the side length? No, right? We don't have this other side. So we have a right triangle, correct? So when you have a right triangle and you're missing a side and you're given one other side, you can find a side by using right triangle trigonometry, which is what we learned this year. It's a huge thing of what you had to learn in secondary two in the core. So right triangle trig, right? That helps us find any angle or any side as long as we have enough information. So the three tri right triangle trig ratios are sine of theta, right? Everybody? Cosine of theta and tangent of theta. And then we know our same. Make sure you don't put just sine and cosine tangent. It's sine of the angle, cosine of the angle, tangent of the angle. And then we learned our little saying, oh heck, another hour of agony, right? Everybody? Sakatoa, however you want to remember it. So now we're going to set up a trig ratio. Now I'm going to choose. We get to choose on this one if we want to use 50 degrees or 40 degrees. It doesn't matter which one you choose, but as long as when you choose the angle, you set up a, a correct trig ratio. So what angle do you want to use, people? I don't care. 50 or 40? 50. 50. Okay, you're choosing 50. So we're, I'm going to circle that. Okay, that's fine. We can use 50. Now we have to set up a true trig ratio based on that angle 50. So from angle 50, isn't this the opposite side? Yes. Okay, so we're going to be using opposite. And then also, isn't this the hypotenuse? Isn't it across from the 90 degrees? So we're going to be using opposite and hypotenuse. Which trig ratio are we going to be using? Sine, right? So we have sine of theta. Well, what is theta? 50 degrees. So sine of 50 degrees is equal to opposite, which was x over hypotenuse, which is 12. Now from here, aren't we just solving for x algebraically? Yes. yes, right? So what would we do to get x along? Um, yeah, multiply, multiply, multiply both sides by 12. We won't be doing inverses. Um, we're not finding an angle, right? That's the only time we ever take an inverse. Right? It's just algebra to get x along. So we have 12 sine of 50 degrees. Now here's the catch. 
Every single one of you, you have to make sure your calculator is in degree mode. We're calculating something with a degree measure. You have to make, go to mode, go down and make sure your calculator is in degree mode. If you reset your calculator, it will automatically go back in radian mode. So make sure it's in degree mode, then you'll just type it in. 12 sine of 50, we get 9.1. Go to mode, then scroll down to where it says radians and degrees, scroll over to degrees and hit enter. So if you calculate that, but you all should have practiced typing it in, you got 9.19. So 9.2, we'll round to the nearest tenth. <coughs> Questions? Okay. Here we go. What's the value of x? Draw the picture quickly here. What's the value of x? So in this picture, isn't x an angle? Do we have another angle that we can use to figure out what it is? We only have 90 though, right? So we have no idea what this is, so we have no idea what this is. So we can't use angles of a triangle for this one. Well, that's why we learned right triangle trigonometry, to help us out in situations like this. So everybody, if we're trying to find this angle, angle X, let's set up a trig ratio. Is everybody good with that? On the two sides we were given from X, from this angle, we were given opposite and hypotenuse. So we'll be using sine again. So we'll say sine of theta, which theta in this case is x. So sine of x is equal to the opposite, which is 6 squared root of 2, over hypotenuse, which is 12 square roots of 2. So now I'm going to rewrite it again, simplifying it. We have sine of x is equal to. Can't we simplify that? Yes. Just for fun, let's simplify it. You actually wouldn't need to simplify it for, to solve for x, but it's okay, let's do. 6 over 12, they both divide by 6, right? Yeah. Let's do it right, though, if we're going to simplify it. Isn't that a 1 over a 2? 2 is on bottom. Then what's the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 2? 1. So we really are doing sine of x is equal to 1 half. So now, isn't x an angle measure? Isn't it trapped inside of sine? We need to undo sine. The only time we take an inverse is when we need to undo something to get this angle along. <clears throat> We're trying to solve for the angle. We need it to be along. We need to undo sine. So this is when you take the inverse of whatever it is. So we'll take the sine inverse of both sides of the equation. So then remember, sine inverse and sine undo each other. That drops our x down. And then over here on the right, we have sine inverse of one half. So let's type it in. Second sine, that makes the inverse come in our calculator of one half. X is 30 degrees. What was the last sign? Was the What was the, this one? 9.2, and that was the degrees, right? That was the side length? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to skip this one. Okay, let's go with this one. This is, this is the last one. Okay, so we have triangle ABC. We're going to have to find sine of A, sine of B, tangent of B. So we're going to look at this picture and find these, find these values. So it says, so I'll let you get the picture real quick, then we'll go through it. Go. Now you have to pay really close attention. You will all see problems like this on your final exam, every single one of you. Now here's what people mess up on. They'll go to the wrong angle. When you're, not, when you're asked to find sine of A, guys, you have to start at angle A, because sine of A is different than sine of B, okay? So we're going to angle A. Does everybody understand that? So let's look at angle A. I'm going to put a little dot so we can keep our eyes focused. Sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So sine of angle A would be 21 opposite over hypotenuse. So 21 over 14 square roots of 3. Is everybody comfortable with that being sine? Now you do not go any further. It said find sine of A. Didn't we do that? Yeah, we're done. We just have to make sure it's simplified. So let's see if this simplifies. 21 divided by 14 is, let's simplify fraction. So that becomes a 3. That becomes a 2. 21 over 14. They both divide by 7. 
So that becomes three halves. So right now, we have three over two square roots of three. Is this answer appropriate? It's not, right? We can't have a radical in the bottom. So we're going to rationalize our denominator. So we're just simplifying our answer. That's all we're doing. So what will we multiply by? Good. If you do that to the bottom, you've got to do it to the top, right? Because that's just a fancy one of our choice. So on top, we have three square roots of three. Now on bottom, we have two times the square root of three times three, which is nine, right? What is square root of nine? So really, we have two times three. Because I took the square root of nine, and I get three. So on top, we have three square roots of three, and on bottom, we have a six. Now don't three and six simplify. One over two. So our final answer would be the square root of three over two. That's for sine of eight. <coughs> So it's easy to get sine of A, we just have to make sure our answer is in the most simplified form. Okay, let's do sine of B now. Sine of B. So now here's important. We're doing angle B. You have to go to angle B. Sine from B is opposite and hypotenuse, right? So opposite would be 7 square roots of 3. Hypotenuse is 14 square roots of 3. Simplify before you start rationalizing things. Make it easier on yourself. Isn't 7 over 14 1 over 2? What's the square root of 3 over the square root of 3? 1. So our sine of B is 1 half. And then did we even have to rationalize? No, right? We're good. <clears throat> Last one. Tangent of B. So we just found sine of B is that. Tangent of B. So now it wants tangent of angle B. So we're going to be focusing on angle B. Tangent is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? No, nope, opposite over adjacent, right? Tangent of agony, everybody? So opposite over adjacent. So that's 7 square roots of 3, opposite over adjacent, over 21. So let's simplify that. That becomes a 1, that becomes a 3. So our final answer is the square root of 3 over 3, which we don't have a radical in the bottom, so we're good. And we're done. Okay? Good review. So you're doing pages 56 through 61.